Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, today I'm in Luminar AI and I'm working on a photo that I took a few weeks ago when I was in Oregon. It was sunrise. I was on the beach and I was literally staring into the sun. So obviously the sun's in the east because I'm on the Pacific uh, coast. So the ocean is behind me, but I've got these great clouds. Let me just show you the photo. I've um, got these great clouds. The sun is peeking up over those distant hills. I like this like a uh, stream of water where the tide had receded. But you know, I exposed for the sky. This is a single exposure handheld. I was just out on the beach with my camera. Nothing else. It was a great morning, to be honest. Um, but, you know, I exposed for the sky, which means the sky is reasonably dark um, because of that. But the rest of it's really dark, you know, but I, I kept the majority of the sky from blowing out. There's some, you know, pretty bright spots around the sun. I'm cool with that. But the problem is it's just really too dark. So I found a few things I can do to really bring that to life. Now, the first one is Accent AI, which is probably pretty logical that you would just go ahead and apply that. And there it is. You know, it helps, but honestly, it's not anywhere near where I need to be. So I got a few other things I need to do. So first, I'm going to adjust the temperature a little bit and the tint. I'm going to go to something about like that. And then I'm going to give it a little bit of contrast. Uh, take down the highlights just a little bit. So, well, you know, like 25 or 30. But I am going to bump the shadows quite a bit, which is, of course, going to help me a lot. So there you go. I've already got much better visibility, but that's not even um, any of the tricks that I employ, which I'll get to here in a minute. But so far, I would say I've got a much more visible photo. I can kind of see, you know, the houses and all that. Anyway, it's looking a lot better. But again, plenty more to go do. So the next thing I want to do to, you know, continue shifting this light is super contrast. So I'm going to go to you know, about 29 or so on highlights, about 21 or so, oops, uh, 21 or so here on uh, midtones, and then about a 31 on shadows. So, you know, something about like that. And that helps me a little bit, but what I want to do is change the balance around. So let me see, I'm going to like a negative 64 on highlights. Uh, midtones, I've got like a negative 54. I'm checking my notes here, and I've got like a negative. 43 here in the uh, shadows. So as you can see, that's giving me much more visibility into the photo. So let me show you the before super contrast. There it is. And then after, it's already looking a lot better. Again, not anywhere near finished, but I've so far come a really long way from this really dark photo to one now that I've got better visibility. I can see across the beach. I can see the houses. I can see the individual trees. And of course, I haven't lost the sky. So I've really been able to balance that light, keep it... Um, you know, in, in good shape, I guess. Um, what I'm going to do next here is some golden hour, and I'm going to go to about, you know, 34. It is sunrise. I want to bring back that uh, that color. Uh, it was a beautiful sunrise. I've got some other photos I'll probably edit in future videos that, uh, honestly, it just had some amazing light. So I was really happy about that. And also, because I have that sunburst there, I'm going to go ahead and get the, um, the sun rays tool, which I haven't used in so long. I don't really use it a whole lot. It was fun like at first, but you know, I just I just haven't used it. Not really a need. So I'm gonna go really low here. I'm gonna do something like uh, you know 20, 25 here on the look, and the length. I'm gonna bring that down as well to like a 25 or so, and also the penetration. So you know, I'm not trying to overdo it. I'm just trying to get a little bit of a sun burst there. Um, the sun settings. I'm going to go with about a 10 here, and I think I'll leave the other two where they are. And then these ray settings, uh, they're at 50. Yeah, I'm not going to do anything else. I actually like it just like that. It's just a little bit of a, a sunburst. There it is before, and there it is after. Just, again, shooting handheld and, you know, not questionable light, but not super bright light. It was just... Uh, um, I probably wasn't going to be able to get that starburst or sunburst myself, but I feel like I've been able to add it back. I think it looks legit. Uh, you feel free to disagree if you'd like, but um, I feel like that looks pretty good. So now I've got that in place. And again, you know, if you look at the before and after, before and after, we've come a long way, but we've got some other things to do. And one of the first things I'm going to do is play with the color a little bit. So first thing I'm going to do is go into, uh, well, here on highlights, I'm going to move this to about a five. And in shadows, I'm going to move it uh, to, uh, let's see here, this is going to go to about a six. So something about like that. It's a very minor color shift, but if you look at the before, there it is. And then if you look at the after, there it is. I've given basically the shadows a tiny bit of blue. So I've taken the yellow in the shadows slightly towards the blue. And in the highlights, um, in this cyan red, I've gone a little bit toward the red just to give it a little bit more of that warmth 
in that sunrise because it is sunrise and I want it to look warm. But here's a good trick for you for when you're trying to adjust a light in a situation like this. So the dominant colors in the sky are kind of the orange and the blue. And so I thought, hey, why don't I go into color contrast? If you haven't used it, it basically, um, whatever color you pick in this hue, so I'm going to pick like a 224, uh, which is, you know, uh, heavily in the blue area. So what it does, the color that you pick, it'll basically brighten that color, and then the color that's opposite it on the color wheel, it will sl uh, slightly darken. So what I'm going to do is I've picked that color, and I'm going to go to about a 20, and you can see what's happening, right? You can see that basically the blue is getting lighter. Now, I'm not going to go too far like that because you get a mess, but at about a 20, I've got a nice, maybe even a 25, I've got a nice little bit of brightening happening in that sky, which is giving me, again, better visibility across the photo, and I think that looks great. So let me show you the before and after for color harmony. Major difference in this tool using color balance first, a little bit in the highlights, a little bit in the shadows, and then a little bit of color contrast, and boom, I mean, I've got a much more vibrant, a brighter photo that gives me better visibility. But again, I'm not done. I got a few more things to show you. Okay, the next thing I want to do is something you've seen me do quite a bit, which is like a negative structure. And I'm going to put that in the sky with a gradient mask. Uh, that's basically a quick and easy move, something about like that. And I'm done, honestly. So the thing there is, I just like soft skies. Um, it's just kind of dreamy and soft and, I don't know, kind of romantic lighting. I just like clouds and skies and water to be kind of soft, so that's what I did. Stuck it in there with a the gradient mask because uh, it's basically a flat area or kind of a rectangular area with, uh, you know, roughly a flat bottom edge. So I can just drop that in there really quick. It's much quicker than trying to apply it with a, um, with a masking brush. So that's softened up the sky a little bit, which I like. So there it is beforehand. And you can see a little bit more detail beforehand, like in these kind of clouds, which, you know, I like having all the clouds there, but some of that stuff I don't really like so much. I like it more like this. Personal preference, season to taste, just something I like to do. Okay, and here's the last little trick for brightening up a photo is actually to use the vignette. And you're gonna say, that's dumb sounding, Jim. And it does sound dumb. It sounds counterintuitive because usually with a vignette, you do this kind of stuff and you get a darker photo around the edges, which is of course what a vignette does. But there is inner light. But you're thinking, well, I don't want a vignette, Jim, because you just spent all this time brightening the edges and all that and brightening the whole photo. Why would you add a vignette? I'm actually not going to add a vignette, but let me show you a little trick, and you may have seen this, I've done this in videos a long time ago, but it's been a while. If you just move the amount to like one, you're basically just switching on the vignette tool. And then you can go to inner light, and you can use it to your heart's content. I'm going to go to 30, so I'm basically using inner light with really no vignette. It's a one on the vignette, so you're never going to see it. You could use a negative one if you want it, it doesn't matter. All I'm doing is you got to move it one tick mark to just switch it on, and then you can use inner light to brighten the photo, which is what I've done here. So there it is before that little tool, vignette. So it doesn't seem logical, but there it is without a vignette, and there it is with vignette, brighter, odd but, um, odd but true. So those are my, uh, my tips and tricks for shooting into the sun and how you can really massage the light using things like Obviously, Accent AI and shadows, but super contrast and color contrast and vignette. It seems weird, but there's some really cool and powerful tools in Luminar AI that will help you do those kind of things. Let me show you where we started and where we are. That's what I started with, my friends, and that's where I am now. So much more vibrant. And by the way, I did a little bit of optics, uh, fix some of the distortion before I started the video. So that's a little bit of what you're seeing in this before and after. But talk about a massive difference, and it was really quite easy, quite simple, and the powerful moves came from some simple, simple tools like Vignette. That's how it went, my friends. I hope it helps. Hope it gives you some ideas. Hope it inspires you to try some of these things in your photos, and I'll catch you in the next video, my friends. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you really soon, and adios.